Good day everyone and welcome to these lectures on physico chemical processes for waste water treatment. So, in the previous lectures we have studied regarding the waste water generation and treatment in few of the industries and that included the sugar industry and the fertil fertilizer industry that we will be studying in today's lecture. So, already we have studied regarding sugar and distillery. Now, fertilizers are backbone of any country and they essentially help in the growth of plants and because of which we are able to survive as we are using grains as one of the major source of nutrient uh, for any human being or otherwise. Now, because of the process of develop process of fertilizer production that means, the urea production in particular via the Haber's process the, the tremendous population that is there on mother earth and in particular in our country that is surviving. So, the green revolution only happened because we were able to produce a large amount of fertilizers which is being used in the fields for growth of various grains etcetera. Now, what is fertilizer first? So, any material which may be organic or inorganic, it may be natural or synthetic. This material which supplies one or more chemical elements which are essentially required by the plant for its growth is called as fertilizer. So, any chemical element if we supply additionally which is not there in the field itself and that is used by the plant for its its growth it is called as fertilizer. These are also called as nutrients because they are essential for the plant growth. Now, there are nutrients can be categorized into three uh, basic categories primary, secondary and micronutrients. So, essentially in 1970s, 1980s it was found that the nitrogen, phosphorus and potas these were the three key elements which were actually missing in the soil. So, we need to supply all these elements from outside. Now, we understand that the fixing of nitrogen from atmosphere to the soil can be done only by few plants and there is no other mechanism. So, that is why the Haber process via which we are we were able to synthesize ammonia and then ammonia was converted further into urea is considered as one of the most important researches in the previous century which is helping us survive on mother earth. Now, uh, going further the primary nutrients uh, are nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Now, within this uh, there are the primary nutrients are required in large quantity or micro quantity by the plants for their growth and they are generally nowadays supplied via the chemical fertilizers. Now, based upon the nutrients the fertilizers can be classified into straight fertilizers and complex fertilizers. So, what are straight fertilizers which contain only one single nutrient whereas, complex fertilizers contain more than one nutrient. So, the in the Indian fertilizer industry uh, we we are actually manufacturing both straight fertilizers uh, bearing potassium and we are uh, also manufacturing complex fertilizers like nitrogen phosphorus or nitrogen phosphorus and potassium all mixed together as complex fertilizers. So, we have industries which are producing both straight fertilizers as well as complex fertilizers. Now, straight nitrogenous fertilizers include urea ammonium salts. So, and these ammonium salts include ammonium chloride, ammonium sulphate, calcium ammonium nitrate. So, all these are straight nitrogenous fertilizers. Similarly, we have straight phosphatic fertilizer also which is single superphosphate. So, uh, this is being produced in India. Now, the complex fertilizers which are produced in India they are based upon the mix acid root or on the basis of nitrophosphate root. So, the example is diammonium phosphate is 
based upon the mixed acid route whereas the ammonium nitrophosphate which is manufactured it is based upon the nitrophosphate route. So, these are the different uh, types of fertilizers which are being manufactured within our country. Now, in the water which is generated any water may contain nitrogenous species in different ways. So, it can contain various types of uh, nitrogenous compound straight forward like nit, uh, uh, pyridine, picoline, urea many other types of nitrogenous compounds are possible. Now, in addition the nitrogenous uh, element can be classified on uh, the presence of nitrogen in water sample can be categorized into a different uh, water quality parameters and these parameters are that what is the total nitrogen, uh, how much amount of organic nitrogen is there, how much amount of total geldal nitrogen, then total ammonical nitrogen. So, nitrogen in the form of ammonia, then total nitrate nitrogen and total nitrite nitrogen. So, all these classifications are possible with respect to presence of nitrogen in the water sample. So, let us understand these also. So, total nitrogen is measured in particular in any wastewater from fertilizer industry or any other industry by combusting the sample in an oxygen atmosphere and then measuring their nitrogen dioxide produced. So, by a back calculation we can uh, find out the total nitrogen present in the water. So, this uh, this particular method gives the idea regarding the total elemental nitrogen present in the sample in both organic or inorganic form including the cyanide. So, we will be getting total elemental nitrogen present in any water sample. Then TKN the total Geldhahn nitrogen is very important parameter. So, actually this, uh, this form of nitrogen is defined by the test method uh, which is used as Geldhahn digestion method and which determines nitrogen in the trivalent state. So, we try to find out the nitrogen which is there in the trivalent state. So, TKN can be considered to uh, comprise of ammonic, ammonium nitrogen, proteinous nitrogen and non-proteinous nitrogen including urea, DNA and other types of salt as well. Then organic nitrogen, the organic bound nitrogen in the trivalent state we are considering with respect to organic nitrogen. It does not include all other organic nitrogen compounds, but includes such natural materials as proteins and peptides, nucleic acids, urea and many synthetic organic materials example quaternary ammonium compounds, nitrogen containing pesticides, polymers etc. So, all these compounds are considered. The organic nitrogen is then calculated as the total Geldhahn nitrogen minus ammonical nitrogen. So, we subtract the ammonical nitrogen and we get the organic nitrogen. So, this is how it is find out. Now, the ammonia or yeah, ammonium nitrogen uh, in solution the total ammonical nitrogen may be present as either ammonia which is free ammonia like here or it may can get converted into ammonium ion which is given here. So, depending upon the pH and temperature, so the ammonia or ammonical nitrogen actually measures both ammonia free ammonia or ammonium ion. Similarly, nitrate or nitrite nitrogen can be found out by different methods including ion chromatograph, calorimetric method, ion selective electrodes etcetera. So, these methods could be used for measuring any of the nitrate or nitrite nitrogen. So, this is there. Now, in the fertilizer plant without going much deeper into how the fertilizers are produced, there are different types of effluent that can be generated. So, uh, the ammonia plant can generate effluent. Similarly, there are other plants which can generate uh, effluent including urea plant, sulfuric acid plant, nitric acid plant, single superphosphate plant. So, all these plants can generate different type of effluent. So, let us try to understand little bit of the basics of this. So, ammonia plant, so the process condensates 
bearing ammonia and methanol from the stream reformation of naphtha. So, they may be present in the effluent which is generated from the ammonia plant. Then oil bearing effluent from pumps compressors section a leakage and washings of the equipments etcetera will be present in this oil bearing effluent. Then effluent bearing absorbent chemicals such as K2CO3, methanol, DEA, MEA, glycerin etcetera from carbon dioxide removal section uh, may be present and this is because of the uh, leakage spillage from the system. So, uh, these uh, effluents will be containing these type of chemicals and this will be generated from the carbon dioxide removal section. Similarly, carry over from gasification process uh, using uh, fuel oil uh, containing various types of carbon, sulphide, vanadium etcetera may be present. So, uh, all these possibilities of effluent uh, are there in an ammonia plant. Similarly, urea plant. So, in the urea plant process condensates containing urea, ammonia, carbon dioxide from vacuum concentration unit may be getting generated and that will be containing these compounds. Similarly, effluents containing mainly oil from carbon dioxide compression section, leakages from pumps and washings of equipments may be present in the urea plant. So, these effluents may get generated in the urea plant. Similarly, in the sulfuric acid plant, uh, waste heat boiler blow down and acidic waste water due to spillage, leakage and washing from the plants and equipments may be there. For the nitric acid plant, small quantity of boiler blow down, so that will be there. Then acidic waste water from spillage, leakage and washing of the plant and equipment will be present. So, both have very similar type of uh, waste water getting generated. Then the single superphosphate plant. So, uh, in this the effluent uh, containing phosphate, fluoride and suspended solids uh, from the scrubber may be getting generated. Also effluent containing ammonia, nitrate, fluoride, phosphate and suspended solid from scrubber using the which is used for uh, controlling the emissions uh, from there the effluent may be getting generated. Also, the effluent containing ammonia, nitrate, phosphate and suspended solid may be getting generated due to spillage, leakage and washing etcetera. So, these type of effluents may gen get generated in different types of fertilizer plant. Now, NPK plant the waste water from draining and washing of equipment and also from leakages from pump glands etcetera will be there. In the stream and power generation unit also uh, the boiler blow down containing high TDS and conditioning chemicals such as hydrogen, sodium sulphide and sodium phosphate may get generated. Now, what are the processes which are being adopted for treatment of effluent and emissions generated during the production of intermediates? are fertilizers in various fertilizer industries. So, that are discussed here. So, one by one we will be discussing each of the plant and what are the various processes which have been adopted for treatment of such effluents. So, in the ammonical effluent if it is getting generated in any of the plant. So, uh, so how to tackle with this? So, a significant quantity of ammonical effluent is discharged from nitrogenous fertilizer plant. So, it requires treatment because we have to reduce the ammonical nitrogen content before disposing this into receiving bodies to avoid pollution and also we do this to recover the ammonia as much as possible. So, for doing this the technology available for removal of ammonical nitrogen includes stripping, air and steam. Similarly, ion exchange units can be used for doing this. Reverse osmosis units have been used for treatment of such waste waters. Chlorination and biological nitrification and denitrification. One more thing that uh, we ourselves in our research group are doing lot of work on electrochemical treatment or electrochemical nitrification and denitrification. 
So, this this is also possible and this is this is under development stage. So, this is also possible to do this both electrochemical nitrification and denitrification. So, uh, this is uh, possible and this technology is also getting slowly slowly developed for treatment of such effluents. Now, only stream stripping is most widely and successfully used for stripping ammonia from ammonical effluent. So, uh, this is this is the most common method which is being used. So, ammonia in the nitrogenous fertilizer plant effluent uh, contributes uh, is mainly from the process condensate and which is formed while cooling of the synthesis gas. So, the concentration of the um, process ammonia in the process condensate it depends upon the age and temperature of the shift catalysis and the process condition. So, if we can improve upon this certainly the concentration of the ammonia will get reduced. So, and the so far what is done is that the process condensate is first stream stripped and the stripped overhead uh, is either incinerated or condensed to recover the aqueous ammonia or is injected into to the primary reformer stack. In the fertilizer plant the stripped overhead uh, containing ammonia is further scribbed with dilute phosphoric acid. So, this is done. The scribbed liquid is used for complex fertilizer production and some of the portion is sent back to the sulfuric acid plant for neutralizing the effluent. So, we can use it for various purposes. So, this is possible. The scrubbed gas is vented to the atmosphere. The stripped process condensate uh, is used as a cool uh, is used in the cooling tower makeup also as boiler feed water after passing it through activated carbon filter. So, we have adsorption unit which is there and some polisher is used before using the stripped process condensate in the cooling tower makeup or for boiler feed water. So, this is possible. Now, going further urea plant effluent. So, the largest source of the liquid pollution in urea plant is process condensate which is formed in the concentration section while urea is evaporated under vacuum. So, this is where the liquid pollution is happening. So, the evaporated process water is condensed in the surface condenser and the resultant process condensate contains 5 to 6 percent ammonia and 1 percent urea. So, the uh, how it is treated? The condensate is treated in the deep hydrolyzer stripper section where the free uh, carbon dioxide and ammonia are stripped off. So, they are stripped along with the CO2 and the ammonia formed by the hydrolysis of the urea in the hydrolyzer. So, this is uh, this happens while the overhead condensate is refluxed and partly recycled to the condenser for reuse. The stripped process condensate contains about 2 ppm urea and 5 ppm ammonia and it is reused as a boiler feed water after polishing again with activated carbon filter or further treatment. So, before using as boiler feed water it may be treated little bit. The deep hydrolyzer stripper uh, combination yields maximum recovery of carbon dioxide and ammonia from the process condensate and we get very pure condensate. So, almost all the Indian urea plants have installed this urea hydrolyzer stripper in their facilities. So, this is there. In the two of the fuel oil based plants within India, the process condensate is first stripped of ammonia and then it is, uh, is subjected to conventional biological nitrification and denitrification for urea hydrolysis. So, the above treatment options use of either hydrolyzer stripper is preferred since urea recovered as ammonia and carbon dioxide whereas, the in the biological treatment systems that if they are used urea is lost to the atmosphere as nitrogen. So, hydrolyzer stripper is preferred because we have we can reuse the ammonia and carbon dioxide 
where is in the biological treatment system we are losing the urea by converting it to uh, atmospheric nitrogen. So, this is there. Then we have lot of oil bearing effluents which are getting generated in this fertilizer industry. So, the main source of oil in the fertilizer uh, factory effluents are the oil unloading, storage and pumping sections. The other sources are the like pumps and compressor bay. Okay. So, this is there. So, in general the proportion of emulsified oil is low with respect to total quantity of oil present in the uh, effluent. So, we will be having very less quantity of emulsified oil. So, therefore, under normal condition emulsion breaking is not necessary. So, the, so these oil and grass uh, greases which are there, uh, they are almost insoluble in water and we can use different methods for their removal. Now, being lighter than water, oil and grease floats on the surface of the water. So, in the certain cases to take care of oil emulsion, coagulant and coagulants aid are used. So, this is one of the method. For removal of oil and grease, the mechanical gravity type of oil separators are also used and these gravity separators are provided with suitable type of oil skimmers and the skim oil is recovered and reconditioned. In this method also the electrochemical treatment in combination with mechanical gravity type of oil separators are also being researched and further for further use. So, uh, this electrochemical with mechanical gravity type of oil separators they can be combined together for enhancing the efficiencies. Now, uh, effluent bearing absorbent chemicals from CO2 removal section for uh, such effluents. So, depending upon the type of CO2 absorption process adopted arsenic, methanol or vanadium may arise in the effluent. So, most of the new plants have gone in for glycine and this secondary amine based vetro coke process or like or benfield CO2 removal process. So, plants with arsenic based CO2 removal processes have switched over to other type of processes in order to totally eliminate the use of arsenic, but still it may be present. So, normally the quantity of methanol which, which is present in the effluent is low and does not uh, cause that much problem. So, under normal operating plant uh, no specific treatment is done with respect to methanol, but arsenic certainly we have to remove. The quantity of vanadium which is discharged from this system is also low and no specific treatment is required. So, uh, in general a common effluent is good enough. So, we can adopt any of the technolog uh, technologies uh, with respect to arsenic and vanadium removal along with uh, methanol absorption. So, that is possible to treat such effluent. So, we can use adsorption, we can use coagulation, flocculation. So, any of the common techniques can be considered for treatment of such effluent. Now, fluoride and phosphate effluent, sir, almost all the effluent in the NPK plants are recycled back into the process itself and a small quantity of effluent uh, is released which is containing the leaks, washings etcetera and it is collected in a tank and set to the phosphate and fluoride removal plant because they will be essentially containing phosphates and fluoride. The main source of effluent from phosphoric acid plants are the scrubber liquids generated through scrubbing of gases, the gypsum pond water and the floor washing. So, all these are the main sources of effluent which are getting generated. So, what is done is that, that the effluent is collected treated with lime slurry. So, we are using lime slurry to increase the pH from uh, up to 4 to 5. Then at this pH most of the fluoride gets precipitated as calcium fluoride. So, that will go as calcium fluoride. Uh, so, we are already using lime slurry. The solids settled at the bottom are separated and filtered. The filtrate and the overflow from the clarifleculator is treated with more lime to reach the pH to 9 and 10 
and at this condition the phosphates and fluorides are further precipitated as calcium salts and separated from the clary flocculator. So, the overflow from the clary flocculator is further sent uh, for in the balancing pond for pH correction and then further reuse itself in the industry itself. So, this is there. Now, then there is a nitrophosphate effluent may get generated and uh, this will contain ammonical nitrogen, phosphate, fluorides, nitrate, nitrogen and suspended solid. So, it will require a series of uh, treatment for removal of these pollutant. So, depending upon the concentration of these pollutants present, a different strategies may be adopted to treat such effluent. So, the liquid effluent from nitrophosphate is first sent to the equalizing tank to avoid the shock logging and then it is air stripped to remove the ammonical nitrogen. So, first this may be removed. So, this is there. The phosphates and fluorides are removed in two stages with lime as we have discussed earlier. The nitrate is removed from the effluent by biological denitrification process. So, uh, this is done. A source of organic carbon is provided in the reactor and especially cultured bacteria breaks nitrate and nitrite to nitrogen and oxygen which escapes to the atmosphere in this biological denitrification. Biological treatment was the only option available for removal of nitrate from the effluent in love, but there are other technologies including electrochemical technologies which are uh, a lot of research is going on and they may come into picture soon. Uh, so, this is there. So, now, in most of the plants because all the three nitrophosphate plants have generally they are using right now biological treatment option, but other options are also coming into the picture. So, this is a, a common fertilizer industry effluent system may be there. So, we may have different types of uh, treatment unit depending upon the requirement. So, I will not discuss that. Now, effluent discharge standards for straight nitrogenous fertilizer. Uh, there are different uh, government of India has stipulated certain standards. So, after treatment the effluent should always comply to these uh, range of characteristics. So, what are their range? So, pH should be between 6.5 to 8, the ammonical nitrogen should be less than 50, the total gel hall nitrogen should be less than 100 the free ammonical nitrogen should be less than 4, nitrate nitrogen should be less than 10. So, this is there. Similarly, cyanide may be present. So, cyanide, vanadium, arsenic all have to be less than 0.2 milligram per liter. Suspended solid is allowed maximum 100 milligram per liter. So, oil and grease have to be less than 10 milligram per liter. Similarly, chromium and total chromium may also be present. So, that have to be limited to 0.1 and 2 milligram per liter and for straight phosphatic fertilizer industries the respective uh, standards which have been prescribed are that the pH should be between 7 to 9 suspended solids uh, sorry there is mistake here. So, suspended solids should be less than 100 milligram per liter, oil and grease should be less than 0.1, uh, chromium and uh, chromium as chromium 6 should be less than 2 milligram per liter, phosphate and fluoride also are limited up to 5 and 10 milligram per liter. So, uh, these are the various references which have been used in this uh, slide uh, making. So, fertilizer industry is one of the most important industry for any country and its growth. And because of which the whole of the population is surviving and we without food, without food grains we cannot survive. And with India's growth, uh, the fertilizer industry is bound to grow. Now, India is also trying to make triple superphosphate and different other types of fertilizers as well. So, this industry is bound to grow and with this the challenges associated with treatment of water and generated in these industries is also bound to grow. So, uh, 
accounting for these water and new type of challenges, the new technologies are also slowly and slowly coming into picture. Except for biological nitrification or denitrification, the most of the processes used in the treatment of fertilizer industry wastewater are physico or physico chemical or electrochemical. So, uh, this is a, a great area of uh, research and already treatment technologies are available, but there are many other challenges. So, for this also uh, we should always perform research and understand the characteristics of the water which is getting generated, then only we can properly develop technologies for treatment of such wastewater. So, we will end the, this section. Thank you very much.